So our first story begins the Halifax Herald, Halifax in Nova Scotia, not Halifax in the northern England. Uh, this is a newspaper that on the 4th of September 1939 hit the newsstands with a banner across the front page, Empire at War, in big red letters. There was another headline, it said Liner Athenia is torpedoed and sunk. So what had happened was three days earlier, 1st of September 1939, the Athenia was a passenger ship commanded by Captain James Cook, interestingly. It left Glasgow for Montreal, basically. It had a thousand, just over a thousand passengers, had some Jewish refugees refugees on it. it had about 500 canadians it had about 300 american citizens it had 72 british subjects and they had about 300 crew so all in what's that, a lot about, of people yeah it's about a thousand a thousand one hundred people basically hmm. but civilians on a passenger liner so when they set out the world was not at war oh a few hours into their journey <laughs> the world was at war <laughs> oh wow okay so this was uh, arguably a poorly timed journey for them oh So war was declared when they were just literally hours out of port. Uh, And out in the Atlantic, U-boats were stalking, looking for targets, including U-30. This was a submarine commanded by Oberlieutenant Fritz Julius Lemp. Okay. He was 26 years old. One of the youngest officers to command a U-boat. Wow, that's amazing. 26 years old. responsibility. Yeah, really. So about 200 nautical miles, that's 370 kilometers off the coast of Ireland, U-30 spots a ship. Captain has a look and he says, oh, that ship looks like it's darkened and it's kind of off the shipping route and it's steering in kind of a zigzaggy course. And all of these are traits that made him think this might be a troop ship or a Q ship or an armed ship of some kind. In other words, a legitimate target. But it wasn't. It was the Athenia. It was just a passenger ship with a cargo of perfectly unsuspecting passengers. And they were enjoying their journey. And for three whole hours, they enjoyed their journey whilst being tracked invisibly by U-30. Oh, that's creepy, isn't it? Finally, still thinking he's looking at a legitimate target, Lemp issued the order to fire. Really? Deadly torpedoes slipped through the Atlantic water. One of them exploded on Athena's port side in her engine room with devastating effect. Obviously, something's exploded. You've got a problem. Realising they're in danger, the Athena sends out a distress signal begging for help from anyone in the area because they knew they were going to sink. They've been hit by a torpedo and they're in trouble. Fortunately, they weren't too far out in the Atlantic and they weren't alone. Several ships responded to their cry for help. HMS Electra was a British warship, came along and organised the other ships. HMS Fame, a Royal Navy vessel, was ordered to go drive around looking for the U-boat to make Mm. sure it wasn't still around. Another ship and Royal Navy HMS Escort started to pick up survivors, as did the Southern Cross, a Swedish luxury yacht that was actually once owned by Howard Hughes. Oh, right. uh, And a US cargo ship called the City of Flint. So all All of these ships came to help the people who were in this sinking ship. So this is really a lesson of equality in the face of disaster at sea that is the kind of thing you would hope people would do and it's an inspiration. Yeah, for sure. So the ship took 14 hours to sink. That was enough time to save a lot of people, but not everyone. 19 crew members were killed and 98 passengers were killed. A lot of them by the explosion of the torpedo. I was going to say, yeah, just from the explosion in the engine room, right? Let's kill a few of them off. Exactly. And that included a 10-year-old Canadian girl called Margaret Hayworth, who was one of the first Canadians to be killed by an action. 